Hello, in this video, I'll be explaining to you the five projects or five jobs that I applied for and failed as a front end engineer in Japan, and most likely a senior position. So I failed all five, uh, maybe one's pending, I might get at the end of this month, but in general, I failed them all. And today I'll be telling you or giving you explaining, uh, explaining to you the types of questions I was asked. So I want to go straight through to it. Let's go to the first question. Before we get started, like, sub, connect with me on LinkedIn. There is a Discord with engineers in Japan and outside Japan or chatting about working IT in or out of Japan, mostly in Japan. So come say hi there. Uh, the most common question, of course, so I'll, I'll quickly go over the structure of most of these uh, interviews. So you may basically have a company you tells you explains what their company or service is, and then you explain to the CTO, CEO, or whoever hiring manager, what you have done as an engineer in Japan. So that is the first section of the interview. The next part is the meat and potatoes of the interview, and I'll be explaining to you. So the first one is, of course, what did you code? Uh, you just got to explain to them what, what I've been doing for the past eight years as a soy dev. That's quite straightforward. Now I'm applying for front end senior positions, right? And the senior positions usually uh, at least nanajumong, at least per month, uh, 700,000 yen. Now this is, uh, of course, this is, this is through a freelance agency. If I was direct with a company, I could charge a lot more, but I'm not. So here is the second question that usually came up when I discussed, when I uh, had my interviews was state management. We all do it, we all use it. And they always ask, what state managers have you used and why for each position? And so this is quite a difficult thing. Anyone who's in front end, things change every few, every few years. I started eight years ago and I was using a Flux architecture. And then of course, after that, I had to use Redux. And so now um, I guess people are using Jotai. So see what, see what I'm saying now is that I just explained to them my experience using it. And if you explain why you used it, I think that's quite a difficult topic because you're going to get a bunch of senior engineers debating and arguing. Personally, I like to minimize the reliance on state management libraries and try to stick as much with the uh, context, uh, with uh, state context, is that, uh, providers and contexts, and kind of uh, st stay away from uh, bloated systems. But that's just my mind, but in practice, I would probably, in practice, I will probably use something like uh, Redux because everyone knows it. Anyway, state management, you have to explain what state management libraries you've used and why you've used. Next one here is our uh, testing strategies. Uh, so they asked me, have you written tests? And I just say, yes, I've, I've made a few unit tests. And I also add in things like Storybook and Chromatic because it's kind of connected in a way. Chromatic, uh, I just used in my last project. And it basically, you don't have to write tests. It's all taking snapshots of your UI and it compares the new UI to the old UI. And if it doesn't match, it will throw an error and it won't be pushed to production. That's something like you can throw in little uh, interesting ways that your team manages UI or manages uh, design. And that's just one thing I throw on there. In terms of integration testing, I always say I've never really written for production integration tests. And I'm just trying to be honest here. And that's probably bad for me to say. I shouldn't say I've never written integration tests. Uh, the only problem is that if they say, if you say, I've written integration tests, they might ask you, explain more. And that's the part where I cannot explain more because I never really, I've only done it for fun by, my, by myself, but not in a production project. And end-to-end -end is something I actually have had experience with, so I can explain my experience using Cypress. Uh, but in, in general, look guys, I have really worked on a project where these have all been used, all three unit testing, integration, and E2E, it's ideal, but you know, you know how it is, guys. We've got to stop lying to ourselves that we do all these tests. This is, okay, unless you work at like, okay, I get it, you work at Airbnb. You're gonna write all these because you have 
infinite money. You have an infinite uh, investment money, but with most cases, you won't really be doing much of this. You don't have time. You're, you're uh, under schedule, as the over schedule, under the schedule. You don't have enough time. You're understaffed and you have to make up some 100% coverage because that's what, they, you know, that's what everyone's saying, 100% coverage. Uh, yeah, so anyway, explain that. Next one is most difficult tasks. This came up in maybe all five, maybe four. And I have to explain the most difficult tasks I've encountered. And this is a tricky one here. If you don't have much experience, you can't really say too much of this. And so I have to practice this question more often. And I think I have to ex explain it. For example, I was using D3JS uh, dashboards and it was getting quite slow. So I have to explain how I made the dashboard faster. These kind of questions, uh, I have to try to, how would you say, rehearse. This is all rehearsal, guys. Most of this you'll be asked over and over again. Uh, for, for, good or, for good or bad, I don't know and whatever, but if you want to get a decent paying job, you have to ask answer these questions clearly and precisely. The next one is building from scratch. And that's something easy. Uh, I've been building, I've been soy deving for eight years now. I've made multiple projects and that's in my skill sheet. But I can, if they have any questions about the types of projects I've worked on, I'm happy to explain. So that's not so difficult for experienced engineers. Doesn't mean I'm highly skilled and the top guy and Facebook's going to hide me. I'm just saying I've made projects from start to finish by myself, full stack, and I can explain how I made it. The next one, of course, here, if you're front end dev, you cannot, you cannot escape Next.js these days. If you want to get paid well in front end, learning Next.js is probably the key. And the reason is they, they're going to, in these, exa in these, uh, interviews, they will ask you, okay, how did you use Next.js? Did you use server-side rendering? They're going to ask you a lot of jargon. They're going to ask you jargon and they want you to explain, you know, how server-side rendering works. Well, we all know server-side rendering, but the, the level of caching with Next.js is, uh, yeah, it's a lot of jargon and you have to explain correctly or you have to explain precisely how this worked with your application that you've worked on or just explaining in general. So a lot of reading documentation, which I cannot do so well. And look out for the projects I've worked on uh, that were uh, all projects Next.js I've worked on were not server side rendered. So that's telling you something already. These companies are using Next.js, not using server siding, not using server side engineering and just using Next.js for its router, which personally I don't understand. I would rather just uh, use uh, react, but you know, it is what it is out there. The soy is real. Next common question is team collaboration. How many people have you worked with and explaining, uh, how you would use Git within a team. Most of these companies, you'll have a few engineers, two in the back, two in the front, or, you know, you can mix it up, but they want to know, can you work well with a team? Can you work well, uh, using Git? I'm not saying they want an expert, but they just want to understand the flow of Git. And I just explained how I, how I would use it in a team, nothing too fancy or special there. The next one is code reviews. And do you participate in code reviews? I think we all do here, all of us here, everything looks good to me, but I have to tell them that it's not, it doesn't look good. So you have to tell them how strict your code reviews are or how not so strict it is. Either way, they want to know when you have a, okay, so let me say this part now. You, I always say, uh, you got to throw out more jargon out there. They, they love it when you talk about things like linting, uh, TypeScript uh, checking, ID setups, Husky runs all these uh, checks before you deploy, before you push to GitHub. So explaining that, and then of course, saying that you have to play with these, uh, the jargon of clean, dry code. And I usually say, yeah, of course, I try to make it as clean or dry as possible, but I, I also prioritize shipping when necessary. Uh, that's my little uh, thing I say. If they ask me, can you explain clean? Uh, I probably can't. 
Dry is don't repeat yourself. Everyone knows that. But, um, you know, you've got to do what you've got to do. I've worked with some companies who are super dry, where ultimately nothing is ever repeated. And it, it's a it's a real mess. To, I mean, it's clean, but it's annoying to work with. Anyway, do you code review and explain how you would? Everything looks good to me. Ship it. Next one is UI component usage. This is mostly for front. This whole inter these interviews were all in front end, so obviously they'll be asking me front end related questions. The one is uh, UI and compose component usage. They would ask me, uh, you know, how would you structure an app if you had let's say three apps, and then they'll. This is where the mono repo part comes in. They want to know: Can you uh, scaffold a mono repo? Do you understand how to you uh, create packages, package UIs, so that each app in the mono repo can use reuse those reusable base components? They also might even ask you: Have you used um, what's the other one? Atomic Design. And my last project, I have used it, but I'm not a master of it, and I would not. I don't think I would uh, recommend my next project to use that UI architecture. Anyway, UI and component component usage is an important question. Uh, another one here is improving existing products. They asked me, have you ever improved an existing product? So that, for example, a lot of these projects are kind of halfway through, and they have a lot of issues, a lot of bugs, uh, certain areas of the application runs slowly. So they want to know, have you ever jumped into a project halfway and fixed it up? So already you can tell they want the top of the top for these senior positions. And it's not a crazy number, none of you has you mean. It is for actually it is a crazy number for most people. But once you worked for at least uh, five years, you realize that this is a lot of work they want you to do. They really want you to know as they really want you to know everything about front end. And they want, yeah, okay. So improving existing products is quite a common question. And the second to last one is a more of a, they want to find out if you spend your spare time improving your skills or are you interested in IT in general? They ask what other tech, what other tech libraries, uh, languages are you interested in? And I just, you know, just throw out a soy dev stack. Whatever soy thing is out, just uh, Svelte. Oh yeah, I've been practicing Svelte lately. It's kind of fun. I'm interested. I'm interested in Golang. Just whatever. It's just I think there's more of a an icebreaker to start off the interview. The last one here is I want to talk a bit about. This is a bit of a cheeky one out there, guys. And I've noticed it, and I've talked it in one of my uh, live streams recently. Is that they are asking now? They're asking front end engineers to write. Figma or draw out designs. They now they want you to not only be a senior engineer, they want you to the to decide design the whole system. Oh yeah, and they want you to do Next.js server side uh, creating databases. Micro, they they are now trying to get everything into one one engineer. Where's my camera? One engineer here yeah, into one, and uh, slowly. But surely they'll be asking ask front end engineers to design everything on Figma. Three application website, they want it designed on Figma. They want you to manage three engineers. They want you to code review. They want you to scaffold the app, which is not so difficult. And then they want you to decide all packages. They want you to ma manage all the packages, make sure it's fine. They want you to deploy it correctly on with GitHub Actions, they want you to know everything. I'm not saying this good or bad. I'm just saying this is how it is these days, from my experience, mine, not yours. So you might have a different experience. Okay, I've been freelancing for five years, and these are the most common questions I've been asked for five interviews I've failed in. So it is what it is. Maybe I've got to reduce my monthly uh, fee. Maybe I've got to go my own way and charge less. And not have the middleman to dictate everything. Who knows? But anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Let me know if you're a front end engineer trying to make your way through uh, Tokyo, Japan, or maybe anywhere in the world. Is this what you're seeing? Could you answer all these questions correctly? Let me know. Uh, like, sub, 
Discord and LinkedIn. Like, sub, Discord and LinkedIn.